Hey, this is Dr. Shakib from Irvine Spinal Wellness Center, your Irvine Posture, Movement, and Chiropractic Clinic. I'm here with my massage therapist, Lex, <laughs> with uh, quite a few years of experience, and I wanted to ask her questions that a lot of people have um, about massage in general. So stay tuned. <laughs> massage therapist for how long? Eight. We're coming up on nine. Actually, no, we're coming up on 10 years. 10 years. And now you have worked, obviously, in a doctor setting like mm -hmm. my uh, office. Yes. And then you have also worked in massage places. We, won't, we don't need to name any names, yeah. but you have. Yes. Yes. So can you tell the people who are watching this video if there's a difference in um, the style the expectations from the people that you are employed by and uh, basically the agenda with mm -hmm. the patients, I guess they call it clients. Mm -hmm. And if as a massage therapist, if you were a patient, which ones you would uh, be using and why? I think that would be a fair thing hearing it from someone and no I'm not giving her a raise to <laughs> gauge her question her answers it's honestly I think that's good to know I I have I asked you this question before no <laughs> so this is really right on this is the first time she's hearing it so yes can you can you tell us a little bit so um I feel like with the chiropractors the chiropractic offices I've worked at the difference between the chiropractors and the spas are more um, the triaging. So um, in a spa setting, generally, when a person shows up, it's the usual consensus is, I feel pain here and there, but I just want to relax. And so... What if they say, I want a deep tissue? That could be. Deep tissue, yeah. yeah. So I have a lot of feelings about the phrase deep tissue uh, because it is misconstrued with deep pressure and deep pressure and deep tissue are not the same. They do not mean the same thing, but they're used interchangeably, not just by um, patients and clients, but also by massage therapists. So maybe we should do in one video, the difference between deep pressure and deep tissue massage. I think that's a good one. So maybe we put that at the end of this one. <laughs> okay. so we'll just Chocolate. skip that yeah. just knowing that there's difference between deep tissue and deep pressure yeah and yeah. then go moving on to um, when you're seeing let's say you're seeing people with aches and pains mm -hmm. in a spa setting or in massage places we'll call mm -hmm. it <laughs> and then when you're here you talked mm -hmm. about being triaged yeah. here because for example in my practice I'm see, I've already seen the patient and it's not just chiropractic patients, it could be basically rehab, everyone's yeah. a rehab. Yeah. And then I give you a heads up, what's going on. Yeah. Uh, so go ahead, I don't wanna take over the, sure. So, um, so it, when people come into more of a clinical setting um, environment and they say that they have aches and pains, um, I'll assess them and see what the range of motion is, if you haven't already given me a heads up. Um, and then I can gauge whether they need more of a neuromuscular therapy approach, which is um, is a bit more comprehensive, um, or if they need more of a maintenance type massage. So that would pull in either a deep tissue type of massage or um, a combination massage because I don't only do Swedish. I'd rather not do only Swedish, but in certain cases for maintenance purposes, the massage could be more Swedish based than a combination. So when a patient comes in in a clinic setting, um, they actually have health issues clearly because this is not a massage parlor. So if you're going for a like, oh my God, it feels so good relaxation massage, that's not gonna be happening in a um, clinical setting. Mm -hmm. So in those instances, does your style of massage change? Oh yes. 
So how is it, and you've worked in other doctor's offices as yes. well. Mm -hmm. Do you think that going from a doctor to a doctor, your style of massage has to change to fit that office? Do you find that or not? I always wonder. Mm -hmm. Generally, no. Um, I feel that the different chiropractic offices that I've worked in pretty much just let you do what you feel is right. Except for here. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel oh, like in this office, it's all about com doing have, having a compatible yeah. methods of. So approach. you know what what I really enjoy working with you is that there's that collaboration piece whereas in other offices it's been more like you're just going to see them again next week so do what you will. Mm -hmm. um, where here you and I, the interplay is more, these are the issues and then I can go ahead and work on those issues as opposed to just wildly trying to figure out without any input from the doctor. And I think that's, that's the important clearly because the way I look at it is massage is an extension of what I do and so in our office with everyone else in the team our approach is to improve the posture with posture neurology with neurokinesiology dns stuff mm -hmm. and then if there's any soft tissue cleaning that has mm -hmm. to happen to release some of those joints for better performance in the rehab section then that's what we do yeah. so i know that while many patients we have basically had a long-term goal of how to approach uh, an overall bigger area, uh, not area on the body, but area in, uh, in the rehab mm -hmm. that we have uh, broken down into pieces. And then uh, there's definitely a collaboration, you reporting to me, yeah. uh, of course, through patient soap notes and, you know, obviously me communicating to you. Yeah. Do you not have that with other offices? No. In other really? offices that I've worked in, there's minimal note taking um, and there's almost virtually no communications between the chiropractor and I. That's not uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, the training that I went through um, is very collaborative based. So having gone from that philosophy and then going into the workplace and not having any collaboration was kind of a shock to realize like, oh, I'm on completely on my own to help this person out. So I'm only working with what I know and what the patient tells me, but with no input from the doctor. Which doesn't serve the patient too well. What is neuromuscular massage? How is that different than, I mean, what is that? Let's start with okay, that. Okay, so neuromuscular massage, we're really looking at the relationship between the nerves and the muscles, um, which really goes well with what you're doing here. With neurokinesiology. The, yes. Um, and so I like to think of it as I'm the cleanup crew and you're rewiring. So we're trying to get everything to mesh together. In the neuro, neuromuscular therapy, I'm scanning through every area of the body to see if there's any muscular and nerve response occurring at the same time. So then I How can, would that, how would, how, what would that look like? So look like is good that you said look like because sometimes there are, there's a nerve response that I can see radiating off into different parts of the body. So when you see, are you talking about seeing? I visually can see it. Wow, what, what does that look like? It looks like, so when you feel a tingle, it lo looks like the fibers are moving like this. So like, you know, sometimes you, like your skin jumps, is that what yes, you're talking about? Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Oh. It's like little twitches distally from the area that I'm working on. So I could be working on in the middle of someone's back and I can see towards their neck closer to their shoulder. There is that tingling perception that I see that the skin is twitching. And so now I know that, oh, I need to work my way up there. So is that a good thing that that has happened? It is a good thing because it indicates to me that this is affecting that area. And in that area, I'm going to find more branches. Oh, wow. That's quite interesting. 
So is this is this only um, uh, applicable to motor nerves, or now we're getting technical? Maybe, no, we, yeah. should. <laughs> Maybe we should gauge it down a little bit yeah. <laughs> because now that 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 was definitely interesting. So I'm very interested in hearing more off this just because you don't want to. Uh, so in general, if you were to be a patient or a client mm -hmm. with a problem, would you go still to a massage therapist at a massage place and just tell them, hey, I need a deep tissue, I'm having some aches and pains here? Or would you go into a doctor's office in a clinical setting and do that? That's actually... That just means you need to see the doctor first, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how it is in our office. Yeah. So um, I feel personally that it's better to see a doctor just to rule out any potential differential diagnoses that may be lurking in the body. Um, but if you're trying to go the easy route and see a massage therapist in a massage place. service setting, you know, the massage place, you run the risk of having a massage therapist that isn't that well trained in these types of massages. Um, and in my experience, I've been looking for a therapist for years now that can do the work that I do, and it's really hard. I recently found someone because now I know where all the graduates from my school are at, where they're working. So I go to them and I know that they know what they're doing. Okay. So I guess if you're going to a um, massage setting and not in a clinical setting in a doctor's office, the best thing to do is to um, really see if the therapist that you're seeing is familiar and is uh, trained in neuromuscular massage. And then I guess ask around and see who that, if that therapist does a good job just because you're trained in something does not necessarily make you be good at it. But anyway, thank you so much, Alliance, so for <laughs> sharing the wisdom. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, make sure you use one of the methods of contact in the description box to contact me. And until next time, take care.